Frustrations unto thee. Thou art omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. Thou art Sachidananda. Thou art the indweller of all beings. Grant us an understanding heart, equal vision, balanced mind, faith, devotion, and wisdom. Grant us inner spiritual strength to resist temptations and to control the mind. Free us from egoism, lust, greed, anger, and hatred. Fill our hearts with divine virtues. Let us behold Thee in all these names and forms. Let us serve Thee in all these names and forms. Let us ever remember Thee. Let us be ever loyal to Thee. Let us ever sing Thy glories. Let Thy name be upon our lips. Let us abide in Thee forever and ever. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. O all merciful Gurudev, every thought of my mind, Every emotion of my heart, every movement of my being, every feeling and every sensation, each cell of my body, each drop of my blood, all, all is yours, Gurudev, yours absolutely, yours without any reserve, Gurudev, you can decide my life or my death, my happiness or my sorrow, my pleasure or my pain, Gurudev, whatever you do with me, Whatever comes to me from you will lead me to your lotus feet. Gurudev, you have provided us with the best facilities in the world for our spiritual growth. May we take full advantage of this precious gift of yours, Gurudev. May we look upon the ashram 
and all its contents as your body and treat them with love and reverence. This is our heartfelt prayer to you, Guru. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Oh, <laughs> 
On behalf of our Divine Master, Sri Swami Sivananda and Pujay Swami Sahajananda, we extend a warm and cordial welcome to all to our Sivananda Day Satsang. We also extend a special welcome to donors, well-wishers, devotees tuning in for the first time and those from abroad. We read from Guru Bhakti Yoga by Sri Swami Sivananda. The Guru is your electric lift. He lifts you to the peak of perfection. Every act of unselfish, devoted service to the Guru is an act of worship, devotion, prayer and meditation. O Ram, that which quickens God-realization and that which bestows awareness is initiation from the Guru. If you cannot see God in the Guru, in whom else? Will you see God? The Guru can help the disciple only when the disciple opens his heart freely to him. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Namo Bhagavate Shivanandaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Shivanandaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Shivanandaya. Today's readings are taken from How to Get Peace of Mind and Swami Shivananda in Pictures by Sri Swami Shivananda. Strive for God It is a well-known fact. Any number of zeros will have no intrinsic value unless a number is placed before them. Even so, the wealth of the three worlds is nothing if you do not lead 
a spiritual life. If you do not try to acquire spiritual wealth, if you do not strive for the vision of the Lord, why have you left Ram Nam? You have not left your anger and hatred, but why have you left the Japa of Ram Nam? You have not left uttering falsehood, but why have you left Kirtan and prayer? You have not left your gluttony, coffee and ladu, but why have you left study of Gita and Upanishads? You have not left your daily face shaving, but why have you left the morning meditation? You have not left your backbiting and scandalizing, but why have you left mantra writing? Prayer to the Lord I do not know thy holy names. I know not how to sing thy glory, nor how to invoke and meditate on thee, O Lord. I know not words of prayer, nor the rituals of worship. But, O Lord, this much I know, that to remember thee is to remove all my suffering. Thus saith Shivananda, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. We should never imitate other people in our sadhana. He too used to try to imitate Swami Ramdas because Swami Ramdas talks in the third person. So he would not say I, he would say Ramdas. So when Mother Krishna Bhavadana asked him, she also started imitating Swami Ramdas. And the net result was people started laughing at her. So she learned that you must never imitate someone else. And because Swami Ramdas was fasting a lot then, he used to go for days without food, she also tried that. And she couldn't succeed in the ashram. So she said, I like to eat, I don't like to fast like Papa. She said, this, uh, I just had my lunch, but when I heard there's something nice in the kitchen, I went back and had another round. They're free and see, jolly like the children. They don't try to hide. If they want to eat, they eat. You know, people come, we go to someone's home, and we want a cup of tea, but we pretend as if we're above tea. <laughs> and the poor host has got to ask us so many times, and then we... When I go to people's house, I ask for a cup of tea, if I want it. But I know many people, they, they want it, but they say no, and, and so on. <laughs> That's no good at all. <laughs> See, we must be free and frank like a little child. See, there shouldn't be any sort of diplomacy and all that when you're hungry and the stomach is pinching inside. <laughs> so I like that, that attitude. See, wherever we go, we must be natural and simple. And many of the sadhanas that she did, she found that she was finding fault with people. She didn't know how to get out of that. So she used to go to the bathroom. When the person was having a bath, she would take that water and drink it. See? So what I'm trying to tell you is that each one must do their own sadhana. We should not try to do what Mother Krishna Bhai is doing and because she did that and we tried to do it, it won't succeed. And Swami Venkatesanda put it very beautifully. You know, Gurudev used to go to the Ganges River and in winter time, you know, Ganges water is ice cold. See, we know. You just have to jump in and jump out. It is so ice, icy cold. And in winter time, he used to go and stand in the Ganges river up to the hip and do his mala, his uh, japa. And only come out when the sun, and the sun takes a long time because the mountains are high. So you can imagine how many hours he must be spending, about two or three hours in that. And that gave a perpetual... Uh, uh, motion of the bowels. See, it destroyed all the the um, digestive system, the lower part of the body. But because Gurudev had a tremendous constitution, he was able to escape. And of course, years later he realized that it was not the right type of tapas. See, Lord Krishna doesn't condemn that kind of tapas. And Gurudev to realize that it, by torturing the body, you cannot gain 
perfect control, but what it did give him was an enormous willpower, a gigantic willpower. So later on, uh, if we, after the office, if we dared follow him to his room in the hot sun, his heart would melt. He would say, no, go, don't come with me, because the sun is warm. And he never allowed people to fast and uh, do all what he did. But the Swami Venkatesana says that um, if we try to do what Gurudev did and stand in the Ganges water like that, the second day will start to cough, the third day will be influenza, fourth day will call the doctor, fifth day the body is taken to the cremation ground. <laughs> See? So never try to imitate someone else. Your sadhana must be your own. You must chalk out something yourself. It shouldn't be imposed upon you by someone else. You must find out your own defects and you must evolve your own methods. One of the desert fathers always kept a small pebble in the mouth because he was very fond of talking. See? And that will stop him from talking. It's a good idea if we all keep on. <laughs> that I'll recommend we should. I hope that we all copy at least that um, desert father. See, we talk too much and so if we keep a pebble in our mouth, at least that will stop um, half the talking and half the trouble in the house. So something like that we have, you've got to find out now, this is troubling me, I must evolve my own method, not what so and so Ramakrishna did or what Swami Shivananda did. So that's the unique feature about the saints. See, Swami Ramdas, when he was doing tapas for one week, there'll be no water, he'll never have a bath even. See? And even for toilet purposes, he never washed his hand. But the body of such saints are absolutely pure. They have a sweet uh, fragrance from their body. And often, uh, as Swami Ramda said, that uh, when he used to be above body consciousness, you see, he was never conscious at, at all about the body and what was happening to it. And they say that uh, when he did come to the um, towns and villages and when people took care of him, they would find lice and all sorts of things on his body. And the whole body would be full of dust and dirt. But in their case, of course, the whole entire system all the cells and all are purified and glowing with divine power. And even if they don't have a bath for a week, there's no smell at all from the body. But Aurobindo says that those who have bad thoughts, there's always a bad odor from the body. Especially, he says, those who have thoughts of too much of passion. See? So, these are some of the lessons that we've learned from her life. See, continual repetition of God, and looking at, at the entire universe. And she would always identify herself with everyone. If there was a death, Mother Krishna Bhai would be there and she would be weeping, she would be crying, just like any mother would do. You might wonder, but it's a great mystery of the saints that inwardly they know who they are, outwardly they behave like normal human beings. They identify themselves with everyone. If you have sorrow, then they will really be sorrowful with you. If you have joy, they will express joy. But they will be above joy and above sorrow. It's something that no one can understand unless you have a very deep knowledge and you know what dual consciousness means, then you'll know. Everyone also felt that Rama was not God. They said, how can Rama be an avatar? See how he's crying for Sita, he's running about crying for Sita, and yet everyone says he's an avatar. So one of the rishis questioned that. The other rishi said, all right, test him. You got psychic powers, change yourself in the form of Sita and stand before Rama and see what is, what reaction comes. And the saint transformed himself as Sita, an exact, exact replica of Sita, and Rama never looked at that Sita because he knew inwardly she was a false one. So the saints play a dual role. Outwardly they'll behave like human beings, like Lord Krishna and like Gurudev. Gurudev will say, I have worries and so on, I have pain and so on, but inwardly they'll be jnanis. So Mother Krishna Bhava often says, I've got fear and I've got no fear. I've got fear, but I'm above fear. So they can move in any state. And uh, so it's very difficult for us to understand these saints. We often think that they are favoring one person and they like this person more and they like that person. People have foolish ideas. They think that the saints are like ordinary people that you see in the streets. They like one person more and like the other person less. 
they go to all sort of this queer and they watch all these things. They don't go, go for blessing. They go and see what the saints are giving to this person and that person and how much is talking to this person and how less to that person and the whole mind gets clouded. See, They don't sit far and sit quietly and try to absorb but they see all these things. So when we go to the ashram we don't benefit by the darshan. See? All these petty ideas uh, cl- uh, come into the mind. The saints do give attention to some people. They might give attention to more. And Mother Krishna Bhai said, puts it very beautifully. She said that if you have five fingers and if one finger is sore, naturally you're going to treat that one sore finger. That doesn't mean to say you like the sore finger more. So if a person is very bad and evil, naturally he should get more attention. So Gurudev is to look after those evil people more and give them more uh, fruits and sweets than the others. But we don't understand that at all. I know many people, when some rich people also, they said, oh, Gurudev didn't treat me uh, properly. They never gave a cent, eh? but they expected royal treatment. Krishna Mukunta Krishna Mukunta Murari Jaya Krishna Mukunta Murari Jaya Krishna Mukunta Murari Jaya Krishna Mukunta Murari Karuna Sagar Kamalana Yaga Karuna Sagar Kamalana Yaga Karuna Sagar Kamalana Yaga Karuna Sagar Kamalana Yaga Kanagam Varadari Gopana Kanagam Varadari Gopala Kanagam Varadari Gopala Kanagam Varadari Gopala Krishna Mukunta Murari Jaya Krishna Mukunta Murari Kaliya Martana Kamsani to then a Kaliya Martan Kamsani to then a Kaliya Martan Kamsani to then a Kaliya Martan Kamsani to then a Kamala Jagger Nayana Gopala Kamala Jagger Nayana Gopala Kamala Jagannayana Gopala Kamala Jagannayana Gopala Krishna Mukunta Murari Jaya Krishna Mukunta Murari Kudila Kundalum Kuvalayatalanilum Madura Murali Ravalonum Kodi Madana Lavanyum Gopir Punyam Bajami Gopalam Gopir Tana Mana Mohana Vyabhaga 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 Kuvalaya Talanila 
ಗೋಪಾಲ ಕುಭಣಯ ತಳ ನೀಲ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಕುಭಣಯ ತಳ ನೀಲ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಕುಭಣಯ ತಳ ನೀಲ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮುಕುಂದ ಮುರಾರಿ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮುಕುಂದ ಮುರಾರಿ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮುಕುಂದ ಮುರಾರಿ ಮುರಾರಿ ಶಿವಾ 
Om, the following are our announcements. We invite devotees and the public to join the following forthcoming online home satsangs via the links on our website. Sri Gurudev's birthday satsang will be on Tuesday, 8th of February 2022, commencing with Ganga Aarti at 5.30 p.m. There will be Akanda chanting from 5 a.m. until 5 p.m. Devotees and well-wishers are invited to join in the chanting in one or more hours. Our yoga camp will be on Sunday, 20th of February 2022, commencing with a home sadhana program from 6 a.m. until 9.45 a.m. Yoga camp lessons are from 9.45 a.m. until 10.45 a.m. Lesson topics are Lord Shiva and His Worship and Lord Murga and His Teachings. The most auspicious Mahashivaratri will be observed online on Monday, 28th of February 2022, commencing with Ganga Arti at 5.30 p.m. The program, which comprises of ketans, bhajans, readings, guest artists, musical and dance items, and videos, etc., will end at 5 a.m. the following morning. All are invited to participate in this most auspicious celebration online. 
The Divine Life Society of South Africa is in preparations to open its ashrams and branches imminently. Numbers will be restricted, with full COVID protocols being observed. We encourage all to take the necessary precautions to avoid the spread of, of the virus upon reopening. In the meantime, visits to any of our ashrams or branches must be authorized by the Board of Management. We remind devotees of the rule of obedience as emphasized by Puja Swamiji. Devotees are encouraged to continue following all the COVID-19 protocols and guidelines in place and to please seek medical guidance if infected. We continue our prayers for all those afflicted and affected by the pandemic for the health and well-being of all and for world peace. Pujay Swamiji has given elaborate descriptions in our books of the value of the Maha Mittinja Mantra, Agni Otra and Sri Hanuman Chalisa. Devotees are urged to continue with these practices regularly for their own safety and protection. Agni Otra will also help to bring rain. As per Pujay Swamiji's advice, the Maha Mittinja Mantra should be repeated all the time while driving. If we cannot repeat the mantra all the time, then repeat it as often as possible. It will help to prevent accidents, robberies, hijackings and other calamities. Om Shanti 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 Om Namo Bhagavate Shivanandaya Om Namo Bhagavate Shivanandaya Om Namo Bhagavati Shivanandaya Om Namo Bhagavati Shivanandaya Om Namo Bhagavati Shivanandaya Om Namo Bhagavati Shivanandaya Om Prem Bhagam Vyajamahe Sudhandhim Pushti Vardhanam ஒருவாருக்கமிவாவந்தலான் ஒருவாருக்கமிவாவந்தலான்ருத்தியோருக்ஷியமாம்ருதார் ஒருவாருக்கமிவாவந்தலான் 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 